I'm gonna go through all the video settings of the Lumix G9 II. This is the ultimate guide for shooting video with the Lumix G9 II. If you're new here, my name is Caleb and I got a ton of content on this channel about Lumix cameras like the G9 II, the S52X, the S52, the GH5. I wanna help you master those cameras. If that's something you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So when you take your G9 II out of the box, the very first thing, after the initial setup of like going through the date and all those you know, time zone things and things like that, you're gonna go into the menu, go down to the wrench and go to the very last option on the wrench. And we're gonna go down to the firmware version and just make sure that you have your firmware updated to the latest version, whatever that might be at the time of watching this. I'll have the link in the description so that you can make sure that you are fully updated on your firmware. Second thing we're gonna do is go to system frequency. Now I usually keep mine at NTSC at 59.94 Hertz. Another option that you could do is the 24 Hertz, the cinema mode, and that's gonna give you straight 24 frames per second. At the NTSC 59.94, it's gonna be more of like a 23.98 frames per second. Then if you're in other parts of the world other than the US, usually you're in the PAL system at 50 Hertz. For the sake of this video and for a lot of the other you know, video shooting that I'm doing, actually keep it at that NTSC. We're gonna go back to the very first option in the menu. And what we're gonna do is actually go to the photo style. And this is where you can pick the different color profiles that you might wanna shoot in. Like everything from like the new Leica monochrome on the G9 II, which is the very first time they've had this Leica color profile in in any of the Lumix cameras or obviously vlog it has full vlog internal in the camera so that you can just go right there and you have the full dynamic range another color profile that I like shooting in is the real-time LUT which is actually you can put your color profile or creative LUT or a convert LUT and shoot with that baked into the image and it's a V-Log base. I have more information in this video that's popping up on your screen right up here. Another color profile that I've liked a lot over the last several years is the natural color profile. And it kind of bakes in that image again, but you get some really great colors with that natural color profile. On the same page in the menu, we're gonna go down to SS gain operation, and we're gonna make sure that that is set at angle ISO because this is going to give you a shutter angle rather than a shutter speed. So that angle, if you go back to the main page, it's gonna be at 180. So that is always gonna be double whatever your frame rate is. So you don't have to worry about changing the shutter speed on your Lumix G9 II. Whatever frame rate that you shoot at, whether that's 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second, it's always gonna be double, which is a good rule of thumb when shooting video with some of these you know, mirrorless DSLR cameras is having your shutter angle set at double whatever your frame rate is. But setting the SS gain operation to that angle, it automatically creates that double frame rate at 180 degrees. The next option that we're gonna go into is actually in this film strip right here. We're gonna go to record file format. And I usually keep mine in the MOV file format just with ease of use and quick turnaround. It also has an internal Apple ProRes option, which you might need to externally record to like an SSD drive, or if you have a very fast SD card, that would be an option too, but usually that would be for like that USB-C to SSD record option. But another format that you can record in is the MP4 format. I very rarely use that, but if there are like some maybe 8-bit settings that you need to shoot in, that's where you would find those 8-bit options in that M MP4 format. The next option on this same page is going to be the record quality. This is where you're going to find all of your different record quality options. Things like DCI or Cinema 4K is going to be here. 4K 120p is going to be here. And it will. you can go through all these settings, a ton of different options to shoot in. But one of my favorites is the 5.8K at an open gate setting where you have the full sensor readout. And that's actually gonna give you a four by three 
aspect ratio when you shoot in this setting. One more feature on this same page is the time code. Usually I set the time code display on, especially if I'm recording HDMI, it kind of syncs everything up. That way you know where you're at when you're recording. The next thing that we're gonna go into are some of the autofocus settings. The main thing that you wanna pay attention to is the continuous autofocus. Make sure that is set to mode two because that is going to, in video, gonna give you the best autofocus option. And that's gonna be continuous autofocus works all the time. And then you can go into some of the custom settings. This is something that you're gonna to have to play around with and get the different options, the speed and the sensitivity to where you want it. But you go in, you play with those settings, but this is where you would switch them. Another thing on this page I like having is the focus peaking. And so if you are in manual focus and you're doing some you know, manual shifting of the focus ring, this will allow you to see highlighted areas in your image. And you can see the display color, you can adjust the peak sensitivity, but what it's gonna do is when you are turning that focus ring, it's gonna highlight the different parts of your image so that you can see what is in focus and what's not in focus. I'd love to see this option with autofocus but right now it's just with the manual focus option on the G9 II. Now, if you're doing anything with audio with the G9 II, this is something that you're gonna want to adjust in this audio option in the record gain level, sound record gain level. I usually keep that around standard, but if you are in some maybe noisier locations or spots, you might wanna switch that to low. Another thing that I'm gonna change is the adjustment. Usually I will keep it around minus 18 to minus 12, somewhere in that range. That way it's not like peaking too much and you still get some great audio, I mean, right in the camera as well. But if you are inputting any type of microphones like a lapel mic or a shotgun mic, you're just gonna have a lot more control over those audio settings. Now on this video menu, we're gonna go down to the very last option and we're gonna go to image stabilizer. And this is where you can set the different stabilization features on the G9 II. However, what you wanna pay attention to is that you don't necessarily want to have these on all the time. So like e-stabilization is gonna give you a little bit more electronic stabilization in the camera, and it's just gonna eliminate some of that wobble as you're walking or running with the G9 II, and the stabilization on the G9 II is fantastic. So take advantage, take full advantage of all of these different options. The boost image stabilization is going to be if you just wanna hand hold it and make it look like you're on a tripod basically, but you do not wanna move with that. I do have some more info about some of the stabilization features in this video that's popping up here. And then in the same menu, you do have some anamorphic options for stabilization if you are shooting with anamorphic lenses on the G9 II. All right, we're actually gonna go down to this wheel and what we're gonna do here is go to LUT library. This is where you can upload your own custom LUTs or creative looks anything that you might wanna monitor your image with or shoot in real-time LUT or my photo style in the color menu. So this LUT library is where you would go and upload your custom LUTs. Next thing we're gonna do on the same page is actually go to ISO increments and I set that to a third. That just gives you a little bit more control over those ISO settings when you go to adjust it. And the base ISO when shooting vlog on the G9 II is 500. So if you're in the vlog profile or the real-time LUT profile, your base ISO is gonna be at 500. Then what I'll do is go down to these monitor display settings and I like setting that photo grid to a third. I just like having lines to play with, right? So if you need to frame something up, rule of thirds, right? So from here, we're actually gonna to go to page two of the monitor display. And we're actually gonna set the luminance spot meter. We're gonna turn that on. And what the luminance spot meter is, is this little square on your screen that will tell you, and you can move it around here like this, but it will tell you the exposure at different parts of your image. Then we're gonna to go to the next display page and down towards the bottom, we have the frame marker. And we can set that and turn it on and set it to different aspect ratios that we might be wanting to shoot in. So let's say we want a nine by 16 for that vertical look. We can set that frame marker on the screen so that it will tell us how to frame up our shot if we want to shoot for vertical and we're using that open gate setting. And then from this, we're gonna to go to page two, and this is where you can set your waveform or vector scope. And these are such great in-body tools that the Lumix G9 II has that 
really there's no excuse for getting any bad shots. So you can take this waveform and place it anywhere on your screen and that is going to give you just that exposure readout so that you know when you are exposed correctly. The last thing on this page that you're going to want to do is turn on this red record frame indicator. That is going to give you a red outline around your screen so that you know when you're recording because so many times especially like on some of these older lumix cameras it puts like a little dot on the screen but sometimes you miss that you think you hit record but you did not well this is going to allow you to know that you hit record because it's going to put a big red box around your monitor on your g9 II so that you know you are definitely recording. So all these different settings are gonna give you the best experience shooting video on your Lumix G9 II. Now, if there's anything that you would add to this list of settings that I went through, make sure you let me know down in the comments because any of those are just gonna be you know, icing on the cake, even more helpful for whoever is setting up their G9 II to go shoot video. So we can totally keep this conversation rolling down in the comments. Now, if you just got your hands on the G9 II and you're wondering how it operates in low light, make sure you check out this video that's popping up on your screen right here. A lot of times Micro Four Thirds cameras like the G9 II struggle in low light. And so I ran some tests and everything is in this video. Go check it out. I've got a bunch of answers for you.